While Seiko is probably best known for its broad series of dive watches, the field-oriented Alpinist has its own following and deep historical roots within Seiko's collection. With it now being some time since the fan favorite Saab 017 was discontinued, I wanted to take a closer look at two examples among the new versions of the Alpinist with the SPB-121 and the SPB-155. What are the differences? Are they worth the money? We'll discuss that and a lot more in this video. Let's jump into it. All right, guys, now before we jump into this video, check out my blog looking at some of the best Seiko watches. We have over like 100 references on that guide. So definitely check it out. If you wanna use that as a jumping off point, I can't really think of a better resource online. So definitely go check it out. Link in the description down below on teddybaltar.com. Now in front of me, I have two different Seiko Alpinist models that I wanted to cover here today. So kind of how this is gonna work, talk a little bit about history. We'll move into looking at both of these watches a bit more specifically. And then at the end, just some final points of consideration, which watch is kind of my favorite, as well as maybe what would be the best choice for which type of individual. But to begin here, let's start with just setting the stage of this collection. The concept of the field watch has been a part of Seiko since the beginning. With the Seiko Laurel of 1913, the brand's first mechanical wristwatch, being designed and developed with many of the undertones one might associate with a watch of the category. And it was this Laurel family that would later bring forth the official adoption of the name Alpinist in the late 1950s. Yet despite the backstory, if you were to ask an enthusiast, what is the first model that comes to mind when you hear Alpinist? I think the vast majority would quickly mention the JDM Saab 017. This 2006 release was beloved for its green dial, wearable case, signature cathedral hands, great water resistance, its 6R15 movement, and the rotating compass bezel. Yet despite its popularity, the Saab 017 was recently discontinued after a long tenure representing the ultimate expression of the Alpinist formula. But thankfully in the last year or so, we have been greeted with a few new additions to the Alpinist family. One being a line that is very true to the previous Saab 017 and another with a single crown execution known as the Baby Alpinist. Fortunately, we have two examples here representing both sides of the equation with the SPB-121 and the SPB-155. So because these watches share the same 6R35 movement, we'll dig into the caliber towards the end of the overview, but to start, we'll begin with examining the more familiar looking SPB-121. So of the two models that we have here, this is the one that's gonna be more direct of a representation of the established idea of what an Alpinist should look and wear like. When measuring from the eight to two across, the watch measures at 39 and a half millimeters and offers a familiar 46 millimeter lug to lug measurement. Although not wearing significantly smaller than what the case indicates, like many Seiko models, it wears slightly smaller, like a 38 and a half millimeter, if I had to pinpoint it, with the dial losing some visual presence thanks to the internal compass bezel, a trademark design attribute for this model family. In terms of the thickness, the SPB-121 comes in at 13 millimeters thick, meaning this watch isn't necessarily Necessarily slim, but the thickness is unobtrusive during wear. The 121 leans into vertical brushing on the lug tops and polishing on the sculpted case sides, both crowns, the bezel, and a hairline bevel casting along the entire lug. At three, we have a screw down unsigned crown resting just above the additional four o'clock crown, which does not screw down and is responsible for rotating the internal bezel in either direction. Along with the polished screw down exhibition case back, the watch is impressively rated for 200 meters of water resistance, making this perhaps one of the most versatile field watches you can find in the market. Set between 20 millimeter lugs, the SPB-121 comes as standard on a brown calf skin leather strap imprinted with an alligator style gray Brain, a look that does not necessarily match the intended use case of this piece and does leave some things to be desired in terms of the quality. It is improved to the Saab 017, being a more comfortable strap and the solid updated deployment clasp offers more refinement and is worthy to make the jump to a third party strap if you do decide to move on from it. Gazing at the watch from the front, the flat sapphire crystal is straightforward apart from the Cyclops with the substantial magnification, matching if not outdoing Rolex in that department. A Cyclops on the date always seems to be a point of contention, but it works well with this design in my opinion here. As we look to the rest of the dial, 
more is the same than different compared to the previous Sarb 017. The aforementioned compass bezel is executed in a matte black shade with some colored accents. Just within a minute track divided by tiny graduations is printed in white and punctuated with rectangular markers at the five minute positions with each sporting its own tiny circular loom plot. The hour markers are applied in a gold tone with stylized Arabic numerals at the even hour positions and rounded triangular markings are elsewhere. At the center, a gold cathedral handset manages time telling duties while also making room for a healthy helping of Seiko's Lumabrite luminescent material that is exceptional as always. The dial text on this piece has been reworked compared to its predecessor, dropping some text at six in exchange for the Prospects logo, a text breakdown that is mirrored with the other model here, but there are some significant differences from there. As we transition our focus to the slightly smaller SPB-155, a different styling undertone is felt as we look its way. From a case surface finish standpoint, there isn't really anything new, but it's use of a single crown, adoption of a bracelet, and a case size at a true 38 millimeter makes for a nice dichotomy for our comparison here. At 38 millimeters, the 155 for me wears true to its size and also features a curved case shape that should work well on all but probably the largest of wrists out there. The lug to lug is also pleasantly restrained, matching the 46 millimeters of the 121, as well as the thickness of around 13 millimeters. But in this case, more of that metric is stemming from the dome profile of the sapphire crystal, which as a side note is going to open up the possibility for some more reflections in this instance. And you can notice when you put both of them next to each other that this one is going to have a bit more glare. This Alpinist single unsigned screw down crown is unprotected from crown guards or any other protrusions from the case. So optically when on the wrist, it feels like a noticeably smaller watch across. Keeping the 155 in place is a three link style bracelet executed with a brush finish and closed with a better than usual push button clasp. Adjustment is done through a pin system, so no screws and micro adjustment is at a minimum with just a couple of slots. But while Seiko tends to take some strap and bracelet heat from enthusiasts, myself included. This bracelet, which tapers from 20 millimeters at the lugs to 18 millimeters at the clasp, is actually pretty nice and totally adequate for the price while also helping to give this watch something of an explorer-like vibe. Taking up a view of the watch's anterior surface, we have some adaptations. First one of note being the surface texture treatment with this one featuring a fine grain finish with a fume type effect as opposed to the glossier sunburst execution of the SPB-121. If anything, this version of the Alpinist formula is simpler and even more legible apart from the Cyclops date given the lack of a compass bezel and greater contrast with the markers. The loom is again, a lot more impressive than it would ever need to be. An effect that along with the highly legible textured dial and wearable size caused me to endorse this watch as one of the better everyday options in its price range, as I have reviewed the SPB-157, a different dial version of this configuration. The hands have some subtle differences with a red tip to the second hand and opting for a brush finished handset rather than the high polish on the counterpart here. The other more notable point is dial markings are printed on this variant. So when examining closely, the texture of the central surface itself is going to be the thing that is going to lead the charge. But with all these differences on the front, things come together equally as we turn these watches around with both offering screw down exhibition case backs that offer views of the 6R35 beating away within. So lately we've seen Seiko investing heavily in the price range approaching $1,000 and above. And with this approach, the older 6R15 movement was starting to make less sense after its inhabitants within many $500 JDM offerings for several years. As an update was obviously needed, Seiko answered the call here with unveiling of the 6R35, offering much of the same no-nonsense reliability with some added benefits with that extended power reserve of 70 hours. The 6R35 is finished in a utilitarian style befitting the field watch concept, though it does feature some subtle waves across the sign rotor and clean machine brushing on the bridges. Given the $700 price point on these watches, this is actually going to be one of the entry doors for getting the 6R35. So with that considered, I think this is some pretty good value that's being presented here. One of the drawbacks you'll hear with the 6R35 caliber is Seiko's quoted accuracy of plus 25 to minus 25 seconds per day, but many Seiko movements are quite a bit better than that and their stated specs and regulations should be straightforward if necessary by any capable watchmaker or yourself. These movements operate at 21,600 vibrations per hour, three hertz, do feature hacking and hand winding, hacking stopping the second hand when you pull out the crown to the farthest position and have power reserves again of 70 hours. 
So now that we've discussed both of these watches, let's talk a little bit about some final points of consideration, which one is the best one to go for, for what circumstance. Now to address the idea of the Saab 017, that was a watch that was discontinued a while back. And now the prices have risen on those where they are now north of, at least from what I was seeing, of these watches. So I don't think that watch makes pretty much any sense anymore. You have a 6R15 movement, they've been out for quite a while, unless you just like the charm and the appeal that comes with almost being seen as the original, even though it's not necessarily the first Alpinist ever created. It is the watch that allowed this whole catalog or part of the catalog to ascend to new heights. But say you like that watch, that Saab 017, and I even liked it a little bit. It didn't was my favorite watch that I ever owned, and I did own one of those watches in the past. I think this is going to be the one to go for here, that SPB 121. This is pretty much the modern equivalent to that watch, or at least in many ways, the upgrade to it. Things that you're gonna notice that are gonna be different are gonna mostly be that Cyclops. You're gonna have that new movement on the inside. But for the most part, this is going to be a watch as a direct kind of comparison to that one. The upgrades that have been made, I think, are making this even more compelling compared to that Saab 017. And this is going to be the model that's probably going to be more in alignment with the purist when looking at the Alpinist. Thickness pretty much on par with what you're gonna find with the other baby Alpinist versions, so you're not really making any compromises there. It is going to wear a little bit larger and it's gonna have a bit more of a rugged type of feel. You're also getting the compass bezel, which for some I know might be a positive, others it might be an unnecessary negative, but this is going to be the watch that best resembles its predecessor. So if you are somebody that likes the Saab 017 and wants the newest and greatest thing from the collection of the Alpinist, this is probably going to be the one to look at. And there are a few different dial color variants to choose from with this configuration. So if you want something that's not green, there are ones available for that. But this is the one that's probably going to be most in alignment compared to what most people assume an Alpinist should look like. But on the flip side, then we have our SPB 155. And this watch doesn't necessarily feel as much like an Alpinist. It is certainly a field watch. It delivers pretty much all the same spec for spec with the previous version outside of that compass bezel. The loom is going to be pretty much just as good. You are getting a printed dial, so it is going to have a different type of look and maybe not look as refined, but on the flip side, you are getting some better legibility from my perspective of seeing just the contrast with those markers on that dial surface. The applied markers on the SPB 121 are just a little bit harder to read. And I think as your eyes get a little bit older, might be harder to read compared to this version. Wearability on this one is going to be smaller as well. It wears like a true 38, if not a little bit smaller, even closer to a 37 and a half millimeter. You compare this to a Hamilton khaki field, which candidly do have longer lugs. This is going to wear smaller than that, just to give you some context where I find the other version, this SPB 121, wears a little bit more in alignment with that when you consider the broadness of it across the wrist. This one's much more compact. It's gonna wear pretty true. The dial is also visually interesting with that texturized finish. And I like these subtleties with the brush finish of the hands. As mentioned a little bit earlier, the dome crystal here is creating a bit more reflections compared to the SPB 121. So if you're all about not having any glare or reflections, then this probably could be a problem for you. It's not so significant, but I did notice a subtle difference between these two. I will have to say though, the bracelet on this one is certainly workable. I have had it on the wrist for quite some time and I enjoy it. It's perfectly adequate for a watch that's under $1,000 and I would definitely have it in my rotation. It looks really sharp on this. And again, does give it some Rolex Explorer style vibes. So in terms of which one is better, there really isn't a standout for which one to go for. For my own personal taste, I actually like the baby Alpinist version. I think it's a bit cleaner. I like it how it's gonna be a, a little bit more versatile. I think the double crown version is going to be a bit more polarizing as well as the Cyclops. This is definitely more true to the original, but for those that maybe don't like that, and there are certainly people that are out there that just detest the original Saab 017, this is probably gonna be the one to go for. I liked it on the bracelet. I like the wearability. The case wears a little bit smaller as well. And when you're not making compromises on the specifications, that's enough for me to give this one the win. But again, some purists are not going to like that pick. They're gonna go for the SPB 121 in this instance. But guys, that's my take on these two watches. What is your take on these two? Which one would you go for? Which one do you like more after seeing some close-ups and kind of going through the 
differences between them. Also, if you found this video helpful and you like these comparison style videos, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon. That's a great indicator for me that you guys wanna see more of this. And you know, you can leave a comment down below if you wanna see something in addition to this in the future for another comparison. Also, if you love all things Seiko, check out the link in the description to that amazing blog, looking at the best Seiko watches in 2021. Spent quite a bit of time putting that together and I think that'll be really helpful if you're just wanting to understand the catalog a bit better. Also, teddybaldasar.com, full authorized dealer of over 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support. We also offer price match, so if you see one of our watches for cheaper at another authorized dealer, fill out the form, we'll get in touch with you. Also, all of our products come with a full factory warranty, so if something goes wrong, unlike a lot of places online, we're gonna have your back and be able to help you with getting that fixed. And finally, nine out of every $10 that we generate goes right back in the content that we're creating here, helping to foster up a new generation of watch enthusiasts in the process. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.